All right, y'all, we're back, and today we're going to be reacting to the worst character on Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Shout out to Bruno, the Bruno Zone, for the video, man. Let's get to it. All right, let's see what Bruno talking about, man. Let's see if there's some truth to what Bruno is talking about. Welcome to the world of Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Released on February 15 of 2011, this one game brought a ton of hype moments over the course of 13 years. Even with the messy release of UMBC 3, which launched 9 months after the vanilla version, it didn't stop the community from been... growing, nor no, the game from reaching its long? potential. With Since... inclusion of X-Factor, Infinite, and crazy synergy, it paved the way for the most creative combos, tech, and setups this crazy game a offered, decade from went the high already. popularity to the current era of online tournaments. Proving that every single character is broken. Except for one. Hmm. This is Chenko. She's one of the 50 playable characters in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Now, this caught me off guard because I've seen a lot of people use uh, Zienko. Hopefully, I'm saying her name right, but I've seen a lot of people use her. And she sucks. Does she? I don't know. First off, let's talk about movement. One of the most basic yet valuable aspects in UBC3 is how fast you can move, whether it is through wave dashing, plane dashing, or air dashing. Let's take a look at Shinko's plane dashing. Pretty neat. That was a backwards plane dash. So what about her forward plane dash? Shinko, what? This is happening because this is not mm. just a dash, but also a teleport. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say speed. Speed is definitely important on Marvel's Capcom, but I'm not gonna just say that's the deciding factor on Marvel's Capcom. I think the most important thing on Marvel's Cap, Ultimate Marvel's Capcom, is timing. Timing on everything because if you get caught in a combo on Ultimate Marvel's Capcom by like Captain America or whatever, it ain't because he was just super fast. There's plenty of fast characters on Marvel's Capcom. It's the fact that the timing was perfect, and now it's hard to get out of the combo. A unique property of this teleport is that she can indefinitely move as long as you hold forward, adding the fact that you can cancel it at any moment and you have a decent move. With enough proficiency, it's even possible to plane dash cancel the teleport and give you actual forward momentum. Unlike her air dash, which is low. Like, really slow. Because of this, it can be used to approach the opponent through the air, only as a way to pressure them. Mo you know what's crazy? Like, okay. You know what's crazy? I think it's Air Dash. Whatever. You know what's crazy about that move? I've seen people use that effectively. It may not be the best move, though, but I've seen people use that as a, I want to say, as a decoy, as a decoy mechanism, whatever. And it, it, was a, it was super annoying when I played people like that, though. So I wouldn't say it's not super effective, though, but it, it works. It just depends on who's using them, though, man. But anyways, though, man. And back to the video. Most of the time, you'll see Cinco players either constantly blocking or getting hit. That's because she has no iframes whatsoever, aside from snapback, which is something every character has. She's the most vulnerable character in the whole game. So why would if they, you somehow manage to get a hit, they make there's not no much brains. you can do. Her combos are underwhelming. On average, she gains the least amount but of they meter work, and deals the least and amount of damage possible, caused mostly by her heavy attack, which heavily scales both damage and hit stun, making what's supposed to be the easiest of combos a chore. What's interesting see, is I that already she got see, two of her moves. I get it. Nidoga. You know what? I do understand. I do understand that she's probably the. I guess whatever. She doesn't take a lot of power out though. But but if you do that enough enough times, man, I've seen people spam. I've seen people spam combos with her. She probably is the worst character on here though. But again, I've seen people spam that same combo up down up down up down up down, and then you know get wins and stuff like that. To be jump cancelable as a buff to improve her mid screen damage. The fact that even with these changes, she struggles with combo links and middle gain says a lot. Now, what about her special moves? Let's see. I'm trying to remember. Kotengeki is a command grab that's on par with the likes of Hulk, both throwing the opponent backwards and capable of following with an OTG move. Out of all of her specials, this one is the least offensive. Anki Ho is her standard projectile capable of covering three arcs at the same speed for each variant. Keeping with Senko's motto, it's thoroughly slower than average, though that the might be speed effective. compensates for it. Still, this move is bad for two reasons. Oh. One, one, one. It has the second lowest projectile durability in the game at one point. 
To put this into perspective, a single Lisa Doom's photon shot is enough to cancel his hitbox. It's tied to the most hated. That reminds me of Dan. You know, like the the you know the short fireball that Dan throws. Like if you if you're further away from him, you're not gonna get hit with it though. But I'm pretty sure if you're close enough, you can make it effective. But yeah. Mechanic in video games. R -N -G. In total, the Cinco has 17 items divided into five categories: normal, high hit stun, stagger, stun. The freeze, the freeze is effective. It's been theorized for many years that her RNG values are frame dependent, so it's actually possible to manipulate the values to get the desired item. But considering how you can't even combo oh. with a regular item, this is highly unviable. What makes so this even worse gotta, is that in MVC3, basically you gotta she guess has 11 items in total, what you meaning that the RNG you probably values might increase not even get the best the item. items she can pull off got bigger. In short, don't rely on this move. What you actually want to mm. use is Enyoki. See that Slower than that move people, right there. That move right there. And that's effective. Of bouncing back single hit projectiles multiple times within a single gun. So stuff like this, or this, or this, or this, or this, or even. To me, that move is effective because it deflects projectiles. Like that would be annoying to play against, man. Like I again, I've seen people do that. Like I've seen people just throw a whole bunch of those, and then you can't really throw anything at them. You were a projectile fighter. Now you have to be a in-your-face fighter, a, um, a slasher, maybe. You know, you have to be a slasher type fighter to even get aside because they're just standing back there throwing that deflection the whole time. That's probably the most effective move that she has, though. If we being honest, though. So yeah, he's right from that standpoint. This. Is perfectly normal. Sadly, this doesn't work with beams. At best, she's oh, capable of not beams, only losing to higher priority projectiles, like hyper oh, combos. Because it's a super move, that's oh, why. And in case you were wondering, huh. add that oh, one to the oh, 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 oh. Okay. oh, snap. Despite looking like a defensive move, <laughs> hey, they didn't it make falls a week. apart easily. If she gets hit just one time, all of her projectiles disappear in an instant, making a shield strategy completely useless. On the flip side, it's one of her best offensive moves, used for optimal solo combos, only in the corner. And because I have nowhere else to put it, this is what happens when two Henyokis collide at the same time. Radical. Senpugu is the move that many in the community are familiar with, as it's the only special move hmm. that's not either unimpressive or utterly awful. A move that's similar to Sirius Area Heavy, only has a bigger hitbox and can hit multiple times, matchable for an extra loop. Oh nah, you can spam, you can spam that. You can spam that. That swing, you can just I'm telling you like that. You can I promise you can get under somebody's skin by just doing that over and over and over, just spamming it. Making it an extremely safe move of block. This move is notorious for opening opponents, as it's not only good as a combo starter, but it's also seen as a powerful assist tool, which gets even more powerful with one of her hyper abilities. So let's talk about those. On paper, these hyper moves look pretty decent. Two of them even have OTG properties. Well, here's the problem. Their damage output is terrible, which makes them unreliable as damage enders and more as DHCs. And you guessed it, none of them have high frames on startup. Oh. Tenreha is a heavy amble that causes a ground bounce followed by spike balls that cause hard knockdown, matchable for extra hits. Because of the random spawn locations of the spike balls, the damage is not only variable, but also subpar. And because of the ground bounce... And to me, I would use her more for like assist. Like the swinging attack, like that would be an assist move or whatever to get my other combo off from the character that I'm mainly using. I don't know, that's just me. Because by the angle, this means that you can't properly loop this hyper combo, even though it would appear to be the case. This, however, can be bypassed by performing the Taraiha loops, which are done by adding a major Hedioki in between the loops. So not everything is bad. Or is it? But is that really on her though? That could be that could be a glitch in the game though. That's not that may not be because the move is is weak or bad. That could be a glitch in the game. That could be something that they missed. They probably missed that animation in the game and whatever. That's probably why it's like that. Maybe that's something they gotta fix in the update. Even though this game is years from fixing or whatnot, but... Let me show you something. <laughs> Let's take a closer look at this move. Specifically, I want you to look at this frame. And with the magic of photographic memory, 
let's reveal its hitbox. At first, I thought that someone hated this character so much that they mm. added this tiny little bubble as a joke. But after thoroughly researching, <laughs> I realized that this was actually intended from the very start. All right, you got as me. As questionable as it is, this hard box is a reference to Vampire Savior. Only instead of small spear, so raw, the hard box extends to the entire arm. I have to say, it's kind of impressive that they paid attention to this level of detail, even if it didn't translate that well. Moving on then, Chirito is our most damaging move. If you're in the right position. Much like Magnetic Shockwave, this move is a wave of projectiles that go across the entire screen, limited Magneto. only by the spawn position. Magnus. Unlike those moves, she gets less recovery time, which is random, but if you haven't seen X-Men 97 yet, you're missing out. Go on Disney Plus and watch the full season. Magneto is him dunking, Timothy Bradley, um, him Tebow on there. Just saying, y'all need to go watch X-Men 97 right now. She gives her enough time to rota, or continue the combo by herself. And finally, Remoko. This one sounds like one of her best hyper moves. It's an install that grants her super armor, tanking every single hit imaginable. She can even armor through TAC breaks, making her a natural threat. However, this is all you see on the surface. But if you look closer, you'll find four major glaring flaws. Mm. It's active for only five seconds. Out of the 50 characters in UMBC3, only 13 have hyper installs. And after investigating each one of them, I found out that 5 seconds is the minimum amount of time given. I mean, just compared with the rest, Dante's Devil Trigger lasts for 10 seconds. The same is true for Virgil. Morin's Activation is 9.8 seconds. Wolverine's Berserker Charge is 6.7 seconds. In fact, Berserker. only Berserker one barrage. install has the same amount of time as Remocon, and it's zero so game move. And given how effective that move is, the fact that you can't do anything in the spawn of 5 seconds zero is, a dog, is just man. insulting. Sheesh. Zero Even is though a problem, she has man. armor, that doesn't mean she's exactly impervious to damage. Because every single hit is absorbed, she bypasses the process of combo scaling, and by proxy, damage scaling. Which means that she actually takes even more damage than usual. Wow. Blocking doesn't help at all, so you take the same amount of chip damage. And since her health is below average, that makes it a liability more than an advantage. Not satisfied with making her slow, having the worst kind of projectile, and also below average HP, they crippled the only safe way she had to gain any meter. Oh wow. She's still vulnerable to regular throws. And tear grabs. Command grabs, capture moves, snapbacks, and cinematic hyper moves. I feel like everybody's, um... What makes this even more of a waste is that once you successfully land a throw or hit, you get rid of... I feel like everybody's vulnerable to grabs. Oh no, maybe I'm wrong. Hmm. ...her golden armor status, meaning that you can actually come with her during Rimuka. Nah, he was hilarious in the movie. Really sucks ass. All of these reasons are why Sienko not only is the worst character in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, but also why I, at least in my personal opinion, put her on an isolated tier list, separating her from the rest of the I roster. Need that's capable of I really need to do a tier ability. list. Some people, however, have disagreed and attempted to challenge her placement as a bottom tier, offering more reasonable options such as Jill or even Shiho. And to that I have to say, no. no. Both of them have better forward speed, better damage. Nah, whoever whoever saying Jill is a weak character is is blind. And Jill has been raw since Marvel vs. Capcom 2. She been a problem. Much output and better point functionality rather than being relegated to an assist. Oh, and to top it all off, both of them have more iframes of their movesets than Senko does. That being said, her game plan is very very limited. On the very slight chance you get ahead with her, without a proper OTG it's hard to get a full meter solo, and in most cases you can only get a hit in golden armor, which I already mentioned, gives you no meter. Most of the time oh, wow. you see her as a mid instead of a point, sandwiched by two better characters who can gain more meter to safely DHC into Rimokun in order to avoid getting hit on start. So, to me she's Using an assist Rimokun character as an armor though. Tool may be unwise as a point, but not as an assist. 
In short, install timers don't apply to assist, so she gets the benefits of the golden armor permanently. Just mm. be mindful of her health. Mitch with the X Factor immediately. Look at the damage on Shinko. Gold armor honestly made that situation worse. <laughs> Despite all of her wow. flaws, some people stuck with her. Over the course of 12 years, we had a few players that attempted to make her work. The most well known of them being LLMD back in the early old days. In the Parsec era, even more people showed up, the most notorious of them being Sosmos, proving that she's at the very least capable of winning some online tournaments. Oh, he went for the back throw, bro. Offline, however, is a different story. <laughs> You'd be lucky to see a Sienko player on stream, let alone in pools. But maybe not all is lost. At EVO 2022, zero player PC Poi decided to enter the tournament with Sienko, Dr. Oh. Doom, and Virgil. And he did all right. He even made it as far as top 12, until he was about to get eliminated, which forced him to go back to zero. So even he knew how helpless that was. But at the very least, he gave eh, us this it is precious it is. moment. It. He gets over it! He gets over it! He gets over it! Oh, oh my god! A Senko comeback! Oh. It's 2022! I can't believe I'm standing! Like that. that was ridiculous. This Morgan was on that team! What happened? Yeah. Here, take a drink. Take, take the mod! Take the mod! Wow. Oh my god, they restocked it! Ooh, respect from the star, they back up, trade the face. <laughs> yeah. Maybe one day we'll finally get the privilege of witnessing a Senko main at a top 8 in a major. But until. Watch, but because it's video Capcom, they're gonna buff. They're going to buff Zinko. Watch, just because of this video. Then, thank you for watching. And thank oh, you for playing. Oh, that's it. All right, my thoughts. I don't think Jinko, I don't think, uh, if I'm saying it right, Jinko, I don't think she's just totally useless. I think that like the swing and attack, I feel like somebody get her and then spammed at the whole time. And to me, she's a good, she's good for assist. I like to get some, I would think to like to catch somebody and stagger somebody to start a combo. I feel like she could be used like in a, as an assist character. I've seen people use her effectively. But again, I mean, let me know how y'all feel though, man. Is she the worst character on the game? And if she's not, let me know who is the worst character in the game. You already know what to do, man. Architect Miss J with another video. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, notification bell, like, comment, share. Until next time, peace.